إبراهيم محمد الشغري جمال إسماعيل علي جمال إسماعيل خالد إبراهيم بياسي أنوى فؤاد جعفر حسن فؤاد جعفر عبد الستار محمد I can't describe what it felt like being in Azerbaijan at the time. We looked through the bodies to see if anyone was alive or weren't. The massacre happened in front of my eyes. Al-Bayda is a small village near the coastal city of Banyas. It has been a thorn in the side of the Syrian government since the beginning of the uprising. It's sort of an opposition enclave cut from any line of support. Our neighborhood in Al-Bayda was lovely. We played games in the town square. There were shops and flowers. It is a small Sunni village surrounded by government loyalists. The area was totally under government control. The only function that this town played for the opposition was that they sometimes facilitated the escape of army defectors trying to make their way to opposition-held areas. On May 2nd, in the early morning, security forces came to Baida looking for a group of three defectors who had been hiding in one of the homes. The defectors didn't want to get arrested. This is how the clash started. Then on Thursday, the gunfire started. It was like rain. I can't describe what it felt like being in Al-Bayda at the time. The first bullet was fired at 7.30. They shot at us. We shot at them. Some of us died. It was a battle. We were very scared. We wanted the men to run away. We thought we can stay, but they should run. At one o'clock, the three defectors slipped away, and we withdrew too. We went to hide in the caves. وحدات الجيش تمكنت من تطهير بلدة البيضة ومحيطها في ريف بانياس بعد اشتباكات عنيفة إثر نصب المجموعات المسلحة كمينا لقوة من الجيش السوري داهمت مخبأ للسلاح في البلدة This is where the executions and the killings began all the civilians died after 1.30 when the armed groups, the security forces, the army, these paramilitary groups, proceeded to go house to house in the village. When they entered, they immediately asked about the men, hand them over. My grandmother pleaded with them. They told her to shut up. My husband said, we haven't done anything. Why are you doing this to us? The man said, you're still talking? and he shot him in the shoulder, between the neck and the shoulder. This happened simultaneously in different parts of the village. There was actually no active fighting or resistance at that point by the men. We sat very scared. We were in bed under the covers. We thought they would come in any minute to finish us off. We heard screaming. Men, women and children, they were all screaming. I dashed out. All the men were screaming, they were saying, we haven't done anything. Little boys were screaming for their mothers. The men and the young men, some of them as young as 14 boys, were taken down to the streets. On a, it's, a, it's a sloping street that makes its way from the mosque up to the residential neighborhood. Some were shot while they were walking. The massacre happened in front of my eyes. When I walked out, I saw Sousan's son. He was very thin and soft. His name was Al-Kharis. Lukman Al-Kharis. He was so beautiful. He was probably the youngest. This one, they killed him with a cleaver in front of his mother. They held him like this and cut off his head. 
مسكوا هيك وبصاتوا رأس راسه يلا ابو هادي ايه ايه ابو هادي كثير نزلت اجسام ولا كثير لمينا على الطريق ولا كانها بالتراب كثير ما بقى نعرف هذا من مين وهذا من مين وهذا من مين ما بنعرف صارت شي ساعة بعدين راحوا We came out of our caves and went to the village. The first group of homes at the entrance of the village belonged to the Swede family. This was the first house we entered. He's an old man, maybe 80 or 90 years old. We killed all his sons. In the house next door, we found Zakaria Hussain. He was newly wed, only 15 days. He was killed together with his wife. The third house belonged to Mustafa Kador. We came out of the house. We wanted to pack our things and escape. I saw my father in front of the mosque. They didn't burn him. They just slashed him here and shot him after they tortured him. Daddy really loved us. If we ever got upset, he would tell us stories about the Prophet. I don't believe they're dead. I still imagine they're alive. I don't believe they're dead. I then went to my neighborhood. We got to the house of Abu Ali Mustafa. His family name was Biasi. When I arrived, it was about 10 o'clock at night. The door was wide open and you could see the signs of destruction. We entered the house and went into one of the rooms. يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله الله أكبر We saw more than 25 dead bodies Not one single man Some were children They were aged between 3 months and 70 أم الحامي وطفلها وأطفالها الخمسة Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. There were a lot of us, and we all filmed. Out of an extended family of more than 35 individuals, only a small child, a girl of three years old, is the only surviving member. The main square of the village had been used as a gathering point by the armed troops, bodies, bodies laid around. There were a few outside of Azam cell phone shop. This was the main cell phone shop of the village. Someone captured on footage, you know, around 35 men, corpses, lying on the floor of the cell phone shop, clearly all dead. At some point in the afternoon, those bodies were burned. They were torched. I can't describe what we saw inside. It was an incredible sight. I stood in the doorway. The room was four meters by four meters. There were about 60 bodies, but we couldn't count them accurately. It wasn't possible. I turned one of the burnt bodies and felt my hands covered with fat. The body had melted. I recognize my son from his fingernail. When he was a kid, he broke his nail and I saw. I recognize his broken nail. His fingers were swollen from the burns. When I talk about it now, it makes me feel angry. Anyway, whatever I tell you, you never express what it felt like or looked like.
They buried them in the main cemetery with a digger. It took three days. Many local residents who were present at the funerals that took place talk about burying anywhere between 250 to 300 bodies. It's very hard to know the chain of command that day. We saw a similar pattern unfold in the sort of three axes from where the government forces entered, which seems to indicate some sort of central decision. On the government side, it was a mix of fighters. There were regular troops. Uh, according to one witness, she said she saw troops with uh, special forces, a badge on them. We know for a fact that in the afternoon on May 2nd, it was not just the army that was present in the village. There were paramilitary groups that were operating and that actually committed a lot of the executions. One thing is striking in Baida. The executions happened very quickly after they started entering the homes. It didn't take hours. They separated the men, they took them to a separate room, and they killed them. Is that indication that there might have been some premeditation? Yes. One day they finished it off. It's gone, there's nothing left. To establish 100% whether this was ethnic cleansing will require a bit more investigation. But there are a lot of elements that point in that direction. They've emptied Al-Baida. It used to be called the White Village. Now they call it the Black Village. The following day, they set the whole of Al-Baida on fire. They erased it. The whole village was like a pile of charcoal. The smell of blood, it's kind of stuck with us. Even if you close the doors and windows, you can still smell it. The smell of martyrs. What happened in Baida is definitely a war crime. Carrying out any extrajudicial executions is a war crime, even if you just execute one man. Those who committed these acts are war criminals. They were paramilitary. He grabbed my hand. I've seen his face. I wanted to remember him because one day I would want to claim my rights. I hope that the perpetrators of this crime will be punished. The massacre of Baida cannot go unpunished. Slowly we are gathering the evidence. We have witnesses, we have footage, we've got the names of the victims, and we're working on identifying the perpetrators. I remain confident that those who committed this will be brought to account. Yusuf Yassin, Adnan Yusuf Yassin, Luqman Yusuf Yassin.